Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. Oh, oh no. We're back at the Hoover Dam. Oh boy. What was I thinking? I'll tell you what I was thinking. I was thinking I've been here before. It won't be so bad. Nope. Nope, 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 nope. That is still bad. It is 700 plus feet to get down there. But somehow it seems like it would be even more. Oh my goodness. See those trucks down there? See how small and puny they are compared to this? Ooh. There's enough concrete in this dam to build a road from one side of the country to the other. 3,000 miles. More than 100 people died to create this mammoth hydroelectric dam that powers parts of three states and is in large part responsible for Las Vegas's existence, at least as a city with so much light. Ugh. I am most definitely not a fan of being all the way up here, but since I'm in the neighborhood, how could I not stop by and take a look at what was once one of the wonders of the world and is certainly one of the man-made wonders of the United States. <laughs> Oh. Hey, I just realized we crossed over the middle of the dam. That means we're in Arizona. Tag Arizona, you're it. Ay, 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 would you look at the size of that drop. Actually, it feels better here at this little ledge. I feel slightly safer. Oh, I gotta admit, it feels good to be in Arizona again. I've spent several days essentially cooped up in a hotel room, very rarely venturing out, resting up from a, a concussion. Rest and recovery, different kind of R&R, &R, but any kind of R&R &R starts to get to me. I feel so bored, I gotta do something. So today I've come out here, and not just to visit the Hoover Dam that all those swarthy men built, but also to see the town that the dam built for the men. Just cross this line over here back into the great state of Nevada, and I'll show you what I mean. You see that giant patch of blue down there? That's just a little part of the gigantic Lake Mead created by the dam. And if you can see that little trail, you see how there's a difference in color up on that mountain? That is the old railway grade where the train used to take workers back and forth from the dam to their headquarters. At first, they briefly considered Las Vegas being the headquarters for the dam and a place for all the workers to live, but as soon as they figured out how many speakeasies and saloons there were, they figured out they needed to build a family town, and that's why those tracks didn't lead to Las Vegas. They led to a wholesome town for the men and their families. And that's where we're going next. Welcome to Boulder City, Nevada. A planned community created as the headquarters for building that dam and as a place for all those dudes to live. A family town that is now full of all kinds of cute little gift shops, all kinds of sculptures, little hole in the wall places to eat, and antique shops. What a wonderful little town and a nice change of pace, a nice little getaway from Las Vegas. But it's a town that definitely celebrates its dam building heritage. All over town there are murals and statues celebrating the brave men who built the Hoover Dam. But just off the main drag is a statue that celebrates one heroic man in particular that I'd really like to See. And here he is, ladies and gentlemen, feast your eyes on Alabam. My personal favorite hero of the dam. Look at this guy. Look at the equipment that he's carrying. Yes, boys and girls, those are in fact 100% actually rolls of toilet paper. This is not a metaphorical statue. There really was an Alabam. No one knows what his real name is. Could have been Henry, could have been Bob, could have been Didymus, Jeff or Jimmy, Tommy or Tim. But the man at the dam knew him as Alabam. Probably he was from Alabama. That's probably the reason. Some guys who built the Hoover Dam had to go on cables high above the canyon floor. Some guys had to operate giant concrete buckets. Some guys had to use pick and shovel and dynamite. But this guy right here had maybe the hardest and gnarliest job of them all. Cause you see, kids, there were over 7,000 men working on the Hoover Dam and it was Alabama's job to clean and maintain their outhouses. Oh yeah, and we're not talking about using a little Clorox on a nice squeaky clean toilet. We're talking about literally outhouses, pit toilets. This guy had to dump lime and chemicals in there to dissolve everybody's uh, waste. He had to keep them spick and span and sweep out all kinds of gnarliness to keep them as, you know, smell free as possible. And most important of all, he had to make sure the men had plenty of toilet paper. Kind of fitting that this building right here has the public restrooms for downtown Boulder City and right in front is old Alabama. Just think of this guy's job. Gnarly! I don't even want to know what his gloves smell like. Whoa! 
poor Alabama. Guy probably took a lot of showers. At first glance, this seems like a very comical statue indeed. And of course it's funny to have a bandolier of toilet paper, but the more I think about it, the gnarlier this guy's job was, and the more important I realized that it is, because hey man, when you're building a dam, you need some toilet paper. Yep, the last thing you want on a construction site is to have the men run out of this stuff. This stuff is white gold. You ever sell a little on the side, Alabama? Huh? Huh? I got a poopy job. I think it's pretty cool that artist Stephen Liguri decided to pay tribute to this guy. It's easy to celebrate the construction workers that were high above the canyon. Tempting to celebrate only the muscular manly men, but this guy had just as important of a job, if not more important. And it's nice to see him get the recognition he so richly deserves. I've been to Boulder City once or twice before, but I've never really explored. I'm supposed to be taking it easy still, but there's just so much neat stuff to look at out here. Look at this giant feather. Look at the size of it. Wow, you could stick this thing in your cap and call it macaroni. And look at this, there's an epic statue of Peter Pan over here. Because why not? That is awesome. I especially like the little Tinkerbell. Ooh, there's a lot of artistic things in this town. And not just sculpture and mural, but performing arts as well. This is the historic Boulder Theater. Home to all kinds of plays and dancing. It's on the National Register of Historic Places. And for many years it was being run by Desi Arnaz Jr. and his wife Miss Amy, who sadly recently passed away. Not too sure what's going on with it now. That's pretty crazy, right? Very random, but very, very cool. Da, 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 da. Boy, I'm willing to bet they are sick of hearing that particular song. Look at this, though. Look over here. There's also plenty of tourist goodness in town. Look at that old school curio shop, the Western Mexican Center. Look at that sign over there. If we don't have it, you don't need it. Also, my particular favorite, dead cows on sale here. This must be the owners. They look like they're concentrating. We'll leave them alone. But my oh my, do they have an impressive place here. I love hand-painted signs like that. So many knickknacks and tchotchkes and pouty wax. I love these kind of places. Normally I would go gaga for that all day, but something else caught my eye as I was driving into town. Look at this, the flying saucer. Area 52. Ooh, look right here in the window. What have we here? Proof. Uh, Extraterrestrial life. We thought you'd never come, but we knew you would. Because we know everything. Oh, we definitely had to check this place out. Look at you it. You know that was going to get my attention. Now, I've been up here to Area 51, to the gate. I filmed a whole video about going up the extraterrestrial highway and looking at everything we could see up there. That's Area 51, but according to this sign, Area 52 is the site of a massive underground alien cover-up here near Lake Mead. This must just be the top part. All right, let's see what we can see. Whoa, there is so much extraterrestrial swag. There's aliens everywhere. Strange crafts and souvenirs. This is so cool. They do exist. The aliens are here. And they want to sell me Bigfoot souvenirs. Why do they have to be closing? Because we need time to read J.R.R. Okay. Ooh, okay. Uh, well, I guess we better let him read. Wow, we were just in time. The aliens were just closing up for the day. Luckily, I managed to squeak in and get just a piece of swag I needed. Ooh, what do you guys think, huh? Even if you don't like them, this is a necessary piece of equipment just in case I ever go to outer space. And that may happen sooner than you think because the aliens have parked their saucer right nearby. Ooh, all aboard. Weird! Alright, Area 52, officially awesome. Alien themed things always get a thumbs up from me. There's also a monster museum in town, which is more horror movie themed. But I'm pretty sure it just closed up for the day just a little while ago. And I'm gonna try to wait until I can bring Allie out here to go to that one. Wow, there's a lot more to see down here than you would think at first glance. All that artwork and all these incredible 1930s historic buildings. Not to mention about 80 antique shops, of which it's one here certainly caught my eye. Look at all this. This is just the outside of the building. Look at all these crazy characters lined up. This up here is a piece of public art. But I'm finding this stuff much more interesting. Look at all this stuff. You have your traditional cigar store wooden Indians, your traditional Route 66 style Blues Brothers statues, and of course, your traditional care. 
down, boy statue. Yeah, he looks mean and tough. Oh, don't let appearances deceive you. He loves to cuddle. Look at this. They've got a butler over here. A nice lady who wants to play slappy hands. Oh, uh, some ancient Egyptian sarcophagi. And whatever the heck this thing is. Not to mention this incredible smoking rabbit. Weird. And this is all just on the sidewalk. Right from the get-go, this is one incredible place. As you can see, it's packed full of stuff. Even the bathroom is full of stuff. Just epic amounts of antiques crammed into this little store right here. Then again, you know what? I don't know how little it actually is. This place is amazing. No, literally. It's like a maze. Every time I turn the corner, it just keeps going and going. There's so much stuff here I don't even recognize. And a lot of mining equipment. It would be very easy to get lost in here. Every time you think you've seen every nook and cranny of this place, another turn reveals another hallway, another nook, another cranny. Finally, a place where I can get everything I need to be a cowboy, and not just me. There's enough cowboy stuff here for all my friends, too. Oh, we're gonna change the show. It's gonna be a western now. All right, I am not supposed to get overstimulated right now, and this place is uh, very much overstimulating. But it is really difficult to drag myself away from this place. Look at all this stuff. It's incredible. Okay. I gotta go. Dude, you could furnish several houses with just the stuff that's out here on the sidewalk and then fill up every shelf with stuff from the inside. And no exaggeration, I saw at least five other stores as I was driving in here that looked just as awesome. I have no idea what I've been doing all this time. I should have been spending more time in Boulder. Oh, excuse me, <laughs> Boulder City. All right, my friends, as much as I like looking at statues of Babe Pig in the City and exploring historic places, especially ones in the middle of the desert, I am in fact actually still supposed to be resting. Dude, head injuries are gnarly. I didn't know that it would take so long to recover, but luckily my friends have a doctor with them in Las Vegas, so I'm under good watchful eyes. And soon I'll be bursting out of my shell, waiting for tons more crazy adventures. For now, I can only handle a few hours of activity like this per day before I start to get this crazy headache. So definitely, if you ever get a head injury, go to the doctor immediately. I don't know why it took me four days. Maybe if I'd gone right away, it wouldn't be so bad, huh? And then I wouldn't feel like a prisoner trapped in a hotel room, forced to rest. My least favorite thing ever, ever. All right, gang, we looked into a little history, discovered proof of extraterrestrial life, and, you know, got out of the house for a little while. Not to mention, we paid tribute to our old friend, Alabama. I think it's safe to say that with Alabama's help, everyone's done their duty. <laughs> Get it? So now we can hotel and sleep well. Don't worry, guys. We'll be back in Boulder again eventually. Because there's a whole lot more that I'm desperate to see in this town. But for now, from Boulder City, Nevada, I, Justin Scard, am signing off. Good night and good luck. huge fan of heights, but I am a little immature. So I do like coming out here because it's the one place that your mom and your teachers can't get you in trouble for saying damn. And think about it, we're on top of the dam, so damn, 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 damn. Damn. What? It's a dam. You better not be saying damn again. Sorry, mom. My job's kind of poopy. <laughs>